Now there are many different ways to install a kitchen in a camper van. You can build one from scratch or you can buy a flat pack one from somewhere like Ikea. And that's what I did. And I'll be honest with you, there's no way I could have built anything that could have come out looking as good as this from my own bare hands. So let's just see how easy it was to install. I'm gonna shut this door because it's just so windy. Well, that's a bit better, but now it's pitch black in here. Now, as you're all aware, the kitchen's gonna go here next to the toilet. And I have a few concerns about installing a kitchen from Ikea. I'm not concerned about it fitting, I've measured it, I know it's going to fit in where I need it to. A few alterations will be needed because these are designed to go in houses. My concerns lay with one, the weight of the product. I have lifted up all the boxes. The only thing that's really heavy is the countertop. But to be fair, once you've got the hole cut for the sink and for your hob and everything, it will reduce the weight of that, but that's probably the heaviest part of the kitchen. And my other concern is just the price really. It wasn't cheap, however, it does come with all the carcasses, all the doors, it comes with a sink and the tap and all the door handles and everything that I need to get it set up. The only thing it doesn't come with is the cooktop, but that's because I haven't decided on how many burners I'm gonna go for yet. But other than that, it should be a fairly easy install. Over the years, I've put thousands of flat pack furnitures together and Ikea is normally the simplest to do. Let's just hope those aren't my famous last words. <sighs> right, well, which one's this? That's the thin one. Gonna do that one last. Right, these two are the same. I'm gonna start on the easy ones. This system's called Method which is uh, pretty much just a carcass for a kitchen. Hello. Pretty easy to put together, not a lot of space to put it together. That's the only problem. I think for the next one, I'm gonna build it outside of the van and then just bring it in. screw it to the wall here I'm also I'm gonna hold this because it's so windy the tripod's gonna blow over it's gonna be screwed to the wall here I'm also obviously gonna screw the units together but I'm also gonna screw them down through the floor as well just for that extra bit of strength really just to make sure it's nice and solid This is the worktop, and at the moment it's very heavy. But like I said, I've got a bit to cut off the end, and by the time I've got the holes for the sink and everything, it should hopefully take a lot of the weight out of it. Well, that is what the worktop looks like. I'll need to scribe it back here. These ply walls are never straight. So that'll need to be scribed. 
and I'll need to cut off a bit of the end as well. Now I am one for sharing my triumphs and failures on this channel. And when cutting a worktop, do not do what I did. I didn't take into account the weight of the worktop. So when I was cutting it with this, this bit literally fell halfway through cutting it. So it left me with this really, if you see that really jagged edge just right there. And this is the side I don't want, so if anything, that jagged edge, if this was on this side, it wouldn't have been an issue because then I could have just trimmed back the laminate. But it happened on the bit that I wanted to keep. Now, so that meant that I then had to cut back pr pretty much about another centimeter off the length of the worktop. And the toilet lid lifts up. This is fine. This lifts up. Good, good. Not a problem. Almost perfect that, so that's good. However, <laughs> Now this is where it's not so good. Down here, behind where the chair is gonna go, is, it lines up perfectly at the back, but at the front, it just doesn't, it doesn't go all the way to the edge. So I'm in two minds now. I either recline the seat and forget about it and hope that it doesn't bother me too much, or I count my losses on this worktop and buy another one, but this time a thinner worktop that's not going to weigh as much because, I mean, I can't remember how much this worktop was, probably about 70 quid, so that's just wasted pretty much, but it's just so heavy, like as soon as I lifted it up I was like, yeah, it's going to put me off. So I'm not going to do anything with it at the minute, I'm just going to sort of leave it on there and see how I feel because I'm going to call it a day now and I'll come back to it tomorrow. But I might end up just putting another another worktop on. All in all, that was a bit of a terrible end to a good day. But these things can't be helped. I'll see you in the morning. It's a few days later because I had to take a break just to really think about what I was gonna do about this worktop. And after some consideration and talking with my dad, he seems to think that we can fix my cock up. I'm gonna continue along with this worktop. I'm gonna cut the hole for the sink I'm not going to cut the hole for the hob yet because I've not ordered one, so that'll be done at a later date anyway. See how I get on. If I can't fix it, there's no harm in just changing the worktop later on down the road. And then at least that way, I'll have a template with this one to line up where my sink hole goes and everything. So that's the plan. One of the good things with uh, buying anything from Ikea, or if you buy everything from Ikea, is that they give you like templates for the sink. So this is the sink here, right? So. To maximise my sort of countertop, I don't want to go that way just because you know you can't really do much with this front part of the countertop. So I do want it to go that way and as far over to this side as it possibly can go. That's as far as I'm going to go with the plumbing for the minute until I work out what sort of drainage system I'm going to have. I'm not putting a grey water tank underneath, it's literally just going to be like a, a grey water container that I can just bring in and out of the van when I need to. I've still got to work out how I'm going to connect the water pump to that tap as well, So, but that'll be for another day. I think now it's time to uh, get the doors on.
I would say that was a successful couple of days. Okay, I had a little bit of a mishap at that end, but to be honest, now that I've put it all together, I don't actually think you're gonna really notice it. As I said before, the hob will be going somewhere around here. I'll take even more weight out of this countertop as well. In there will be tiled or something, I'm not really decided yet. Don't worry, I will keep you informed on the miles per gallon I get from this van now that I've got this heavy kitchen in here. But when I was bringing all this back from Ikea the other day, I was getting about 20 miles to the gallon. So I'm guessing that's probably what I'm gonna get. But that should be fine for weekend trips, which is what I do out in the van. I'd also like to say thank you to everyone who's bought me a beer through the link in the description. Thank you very much, it's really appreciated, especially as everything's getting really expensive now. And uh, I've got a little bit of work to do on the engine of this van, which means it needs to go into a garage. So any help is much appreciated. And if you're new here and you're enjoying this van build, then check out this playlist right here where you can watch it all the way through. And I'll see you next week. Cheers. Cheers.